everyone, it's Ben with Side Effects, and I am here talking to Brian, who is the third place winner of Houdini Game Jam with his game Run Chicken Run. How you doing today, Brian? Not bad. Thanks, Ben. So, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started with game development? Um, how long have you been using Houdini? That kind of stuff. Sure. Um, game development's actually really new for me. Um, I've been in the animated feature film industry for a long time. Um, primarily focused in materials. Um, I worked at uh, Blue Sky Studios for the last 16 years uh, doing material stuff for them the whole time. Uh, worked on 12 different feature films. It was a whole lot of fun. Um, and recently started switching gears and uh, working on transitioning to game industry. Um, I've been in Unreal now for almost a year. Um, just kind of figuring things out. And Houdini-wise, um, I used Houdini for kind of my last year at Blue Sky, but it was primarily for the LOPS context, uh, just for doing shader authoring and a little bit of test lighting and things like that. So nowhere near um, what I was doing for the game jam with uh, asset creation and modeling and stuff like that. So this was a whole new uh, frontier for me. And um, so give us a little description of your game that you made, Run Chicken Run, in its final form. <laughs> sure, Run Chicken Run uh, is a randomized um, endless runner. So uh, you're a small chicken, um, basically you seize an opportunity to escape the farm, so he makes a run for it, and basically you're trying to outrun a uh, farmer's uh, farmhand who's chasing you. Happens to be a robotic uh, farmhand in this case, but uh, he's basically um, constantly getting closer and closer to you as you stumble. So if you hit something and slow down a little bit, he gets a little bit closer. And then if you navigate successfully around obstacles long enough, uh, he starts to run quicker and quicker and quicker as the game goes on. And it just keeps building the terrain uh, in a random fashion as you go. So it can go on forever. And then every time you play it, it's a slightly different course. And so can you tell us how you use Houdini on the game? It's, you know, specifically what things you use Houdini for? Sure. Um, Houdini I use to create uh, a bunch of different HDAs. And all those HDAs I brought into Unreal using the Houdini engine and then configure them further once they were in Unreal. So I used Houdini primarily to just build my building blocks and then did the assembly of those building blocks once I was in Unreal. But I used it to make all the ground, um, so all the ground planes that the chicken's running on, uh, all the fences that you are kind of acting as like barricades to help guide him along the way and fences around the various animal pens. Um, I used it to create all the bridges. There's a section in the game later where you're running over um, some columns that are supported uh, over the water and they have bridges connecting them. So I used it to build procedural bridges that I could um, quickly kind of modify once I was on Unreal. So I built all these HDAs, used Houdini Engine to bring them into Unreal. And then in Unreal, did kind of a white box, gray box, um, quick layout of my scene. I would use the HDAs um, and kind of iterate on them to figure out, all right, well, this ground can be angled at this degree, and I can make my grooves this deep for it to feel good relative to the size of the chicken. And I use it to place all my fences kind of dynamically. Once I built all my grounds uh, and put all the animals kind of where I wanted them, I could quickly just make little pens uh, around each one with the fence tool, which is kind of cool. And then the bridge one allowed me to... Um, kind of iterate on the spacing between the, the columns of where the bridges would support. So I knew how far uh, the chicken could run um, and I could iterate on that quickly and then kind of dynamically edit the spline uh, that was driving the whole system for that HDA in, in Unreal um, and dynamically like modify the sag of the bridge and all that based on actual gameplay of when I was in there with the chicken so I got it to a good point that I liked it, and then I basically baked out all the results to static meshes and did them kind of in the, the traditional Unreal way, but using Houdini as a construction tool. Can you tell us a bit more about how it went using Houdini, Houdini Engine, and Unreal together? You know, kind of what was that process like and the workflow there? Sure, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Um, basically, um, 
it was very iterative, which was kind of nice. So I could dynamically um, move my, you know, goalposts around for my bridges. So I knew, you know, you could enter at this angle and exit at this angle and kind of dynamically figure out, you know, as I'm playing it a couple times at various speeds of the chicken, how much of an angle can I put on the bridge before he can't actually run on it anymore and he just automatically runs off into the water. So yeah. trying to find that sweet spot of appropriate angles and heights and um, appropriate sags so he didn't slow down too much when he was coming up the other side. Um, so all those things basically using it as a, a little iterative procedural tool. And I could also, um, you know, dynamically adjust all the spacing and distance too and not have to, it would just add more planks as it went, um, you know, as I needed to make the bridge longer or shorter. Uh, so before the Game Jam, Side Effects had created a Game Jam starter kit for the Game Jammers to use, and you actually used the starter kit. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. Um, so before the Jam started, I studied all the HTAs uh, that were uh, published to try and learn as much as I possibly could about what was possible with these HTAs, what types of control I would have in Houdini, what types of control I would have through Houdini Engine in Unreal to figure out where... Um, it made the most sense to do the edits and to do my work. And then uh, I chose the Boolean edge damage um, tool that was made to convert, um, kind of quickly convert a lot of my white box temp geo that I had put in the scene just for getting rough spacing and rough ideas of where I wanted my, my scene pieces to be blocked out. I was able to take that stuff right as it was and convert that to um, a much nicer looking mesh uh, and iterate on, you know, taking some chips out of it, uh, chunks out, and I, I basically made every column in the, um, the bridge ocean, ocean section of uh, the game with that. I made all the clips with that. Um, that's about it. But it was it was very powerful and, and cool to be able to just take all this generic cubes, cones, spheres, and boxes that I used to lay out the level add a few more really fast and then just immediately convert that to a nice, uh, optimized, pretty looking mesh. All right. That's all great information, Brian. And, uh, thanks for taking the time to do this with us. Sure. No problem, Ben. Thanks for hosting.